the detail tool in Luminar Neo offers a great way of enhancing details, texture, structure and sharpness in your images. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use all the sliders in this tool to get the most out of it. And off we go into Luminar Neo, where we starting in the catalog module. Now we are looking at our sample files here. And here is a reminder, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, just jump into the description of this video, follow the link there, download the sample files and we can start. Now let's just select one of these images and let's go into the edit module. Here to access the details tool, we're going to be going into our main editing toolbar and we're going to be focusing on the essential section. And here is the details tool. To open it, well, you just click on it like any other tools. Here, as you can see, we have a number of controllers as well as two secret tabs. And before we start looking at all the controllers, let's ask our friend Lumibot to tell us more about the details tool. Thank you, Jakub, and hello, everyone. Let's take a moment to explore the details tool in Luminar Neo your go-to for adding sharpness and texture without unwanted halos or artifacts. You'll find separate sliders for small, medium, and large details, giving you precise control over how your image pops. There's also a sharpen slider to enhance soft edges, plus masking options to apply detail exactly where it's needed and protect areas where it's not. Just remember to zoom in to 100% to see the full effect. And if you ever need editing help, I'm always around at cleverphotographer.com slash Lumibot. Now over to Jakub to show you how each control works. Well done. Thank you so much. And yes, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's just make sure that we have the details tool nice and visible. Let's open all the tabs and going through it, you can see that we have a small, medium and large details. And we also have the sharpen slider. Now to understand the difference between sharpening and the details, we have this example image here. So regardless, it's not really important, but the Eiffel Tower, beautiful view, lots of contrast there. And basically what I did, I just selected this area here and I have zoomed in as far as the pixel size. The images, the digital images are actually made from pixels. Now they include information like the saturation and brightness and so on. Now, looking at it, you can see them here, right? You can see them. You can see if I zoom in even closer, the different squares. Now, they do have a different brightness and different color. Now, when it comes to increasing the sharpness or adding the sharpness using the sharpen slider, what it does, it look at the individual pixels. So just like this one here, one, two, three, and many. And basically, by increasing the slider, it will increase the contrast between them. So imagine, for example, easier or better example here, brighter pixel and darker pixel. If I would increase the sharpen slider at that level, at that small level, the darker pixel will get darker and the brighter pixel will get brighter. And that's how the sharpening is done. Very simple. Now, when we have a similar pixels next to each other, like this here, we have a two similar color and exposure or brightness of the pixels when it's just very few of them, like two, for example, that is called small detail. So it's a group of similar pixels. When we're talking about medium detail, that would be bigger group of pixels. And for the large detail, as you guessed it, it would be a larger group of details. But basically, it will take these groups of pixels and by increasing the sliders, it will increase the contrast between them. And by decreasing it, it will remove the contrast between them. So small, very small amount of pixels together, small groups, medium, little bigger and large, big group of pixels with the same or similar color and brightness, just like this here. Well, now we know what's the difference between the details and sharpening, but we have some additional options here, details masking and sharpening masking. Now the details masking is focusing only on our three detail slider. So they are connected together and sharpening masking is connected with the sharpen slider. Now, what is the masking for? Well, very basically, they just make sure that we are adding 
details or removing details and adding sharpening only to the areas that have a textures, details or edges. So basically that we're not sharpening, for example, the sky where there is nothing to sharpen. Because if you increase the details and the sharpening too much, you will bring back or actually create noise in your image. And I will show you how that can happen now. So let's move to our example image where we have this beautiful lady. Let's open the details tab. Let's make it again nice and visible. And let's go completely crazy. Let's take the small details, increase them, medium details, all the way large details. And it's crazy. It's not nice at all, right? I mean, we completely destroyed her face and everything around and it's just not nice at all. This looks like I don't know, like the HDR photos five, 10 years ago. But of course that we can fix this. And how are we going to fix this? Well, we're going to go into details masking, where we're going to take the details masking slider and bring it up. And notice as I bring it up, suddenly the details are away from her face as well as the background. They only remain on her hair. Let's have a look. If I bring it down, ooh, crazy. <laughs> when I bring it back up, it's fixed. Now, of course, that you wouldn't go for the 100, 100, 100. That's crazy. However, this is a great way for me to show you how the details masking work. Now, I can tell you that the way the details masking work is looking at the image, looking at the contrast or the difference between different pixels, and basically just using that to make sure, again, that we only adding details and sharpening to the areas that do have this texture and edge. However, for you, the most important is to use the details masking generally around 80 or 70 is a good value and apply it every time you use tools where you enhancing details or sharpness. So let's reset this and just quickly into the sharpening. If we push that all the way up and zoom in again, we have added lots of details. Let's have a look before and after we have brought lots of texture on her face, which is also not really nice. It would work exactly the same. We would go into the sharpening masking where we would take the masking and just bring it up. And again, sharpness will be focused on the areas like her hair or her clothes, and it will disappear from her face. Not completely because sharpening on 100 is too crazy anyway, but it will help. Additionally, when it comes to the other sliders, so let's just increase this. <laughs> we have the sharpening masking. We have the radius which basically just control how much of the edge will be added. So if you want very thin edge of the sharpening, you bring it down. When you want it very thick, you bring it up. But honestly, you can only see it at the pixels level. And in details masking, the details protection, just make sure that the details on your image are protected. But generally, around 50 is a good value here. So let's reset our tool and just applied the way we would normally do. So looking at it, I would just like to enhance her hair a little bit. And for that, let's zoom into 100%. Now you can just use your mouse, command or control one or the shortcut in a corner of your screen, then navigate towards the hair, just drag it around. And let's start by increasing the small details. So let's have a look. It's always good to bring it up a little bit and see what it does. For example, the small details, it's actually great for the hair. It does a great job. So looking at it, we don't want to overdo it, but I think probably just somewhere around 20 works well. Now, medium details, again, bring it up and down, see what it does. Now for me, way too much. We don't want to over process it. So we're just going to go for the 10 and large details. Well, let's have a look again. Now the large details generally is a little bit too much for the hair. So we're just going to leave it the way it is. Now, sharpening, we can add a little bit. Let's go for 10. And as I mentioned, most importantly, into the details masking, where we're going to add 50 on our details protection and details masking around 70 or 80. So this way, again, we're adding this only to her hair and to her clothes. Now, when it comes again to sharpening, into sharpening masking, where we're going to also add around 80 masking here. This way we get a nice balance edit. And of course we can quickly have a look at the before and after. And the result is very subtle. And that's always what we're looking for. Now to finish it off, let's close the details tool and actually open it again. This time 
we're going to go the other way around. Instead of going up and adding details, we're going to go down and remove them. So let's do a little bit, a little bit here, but more importantly, on a large details, let's bring them down. Now, what it's doing, if you overdo it on all of them, it's softening the image, right? Which is really not that great. So let's just focus on the large details, bring it down a little bit somewhere around here and around here. Again, details masking on 80 and details protection on 50. That's good. And now what we want to do is just to make sure that we're adding this softness only to the background of the photo. Well, how are we going to do this? Into the masking we go, where, of course, we can use any of the options here. You can brush it in. You can probably use the radial gradient as well, or you can use the mask AI. So let's do that. Let's see what it's going to give us. How the mask AI works, well, it scans the image and creates automatic masks that we can then use. When finished, this is what we're going to get. On this image, we have a human flora architecture and man-made ground. So let's select the human, which is good enough. Perfect. And then arrow back and into the mask actions, because I told you that I would like to add the softness to everything other than the human. All we need to do is to click on invert. And now we have selected everything other than the human. So when we go back to adjustments and let's say that we make it even more soft with these sliders, it doesn't affect our subject. Anyway, make sure you play around with this tool. It's a great way to enhance your photos. But as I mentioned at the beginning, do it so it's not too visible. Be careful, don't overdo it and try to keep the edit as natural as possible. Now, before you're going to leave, make sure that you check out our YouTube channel at Clever Photographer, where we have a video tutorial for every single tool in this application. So don't stop today. Continue learning, choose one of the videos on your screen now and keep moving forward on your photo editing journey.